In this video, I'll show you how to pair up the edges on your 7x7 cube and then finish off the 3x3 stage of the solve. After solving the center pieces on our 7x7, we now need to pair up all of the edge pieces. We're going to do this using the exact same method that we did on the 6x6 as well as on the 5x5. We're going to firstly pair up the first eight edges using the free slice method, so using kind of middle slice as a buffer, and then we'll tackle our last four edges. In each group of five edge pieces on a 7x7, there's one middle edge, two inner wings, so this one and this one, and two outer wing pieces like this. So if you know how to pair up the first eight edges on a five by five or a six by six, then pairing up the first eight on a seven by seven should be fairly trivial. However, I'm gonna run you through it as an example and just show you what I'm thinking about. So we can start out by you know trying to find a few pieces that are already solved. And I see that these uh, green and orange ones, so this one, this one, and this one, are all already solved. This green and orange one is here. So because this color and this color are the same, or this color and this color are different, I'm going to do F R prime F prime R, and then slice across to make a group of four edges. Now I just need this last outer green and orange wing, and it is here, like this. So I'm going to insert it down to this position, and then slice across. And now I've paired up my first edge. So what I'm going to do is just put it in the top layer, like that and then start working on my next edge. So I guess for the next edge I see I have these two red and white pieces already done for me. So I'm just going to put them in here and look around for the next, uh, the remaining three red and white pieces. So I've got this one here. So I can insert and slice that one up and the last two are here. So I can insert those two and then slice them both across to pair up my second edge. And as I've previously stored the first edge on this face here, so att attached to the yellow center, what I want to do is also store this next one on this face as well. So I'm going to store the first four uh, around the yellow face and then flip it over and store the last four around here. So continuing on from this angle, um, we can look for, I guess, what's a good option to solve next. And I see this white and green one and this white and green one. So we can just do one move like that to pair up those two and then look for the rest of the white and green edge pieces. So here is one, insert, slice, now I've got this group of three. This white and green one is here, and insert, slice it there, and then this white and green one. I can insert like that and then slice across. And again, I'll store it on this face. So now I've solved three edges. Um, looking for what to solve next, I see this red and yellow one and this red and yellow one which can be paired up with one move. Now we've got this red and yellow middle edge here and these two here, however they have the same color facing towards us, so if we were to do a slice move like this, then this these two actually belong up here compared to this one. So what I need to do is flip this edge in place like that and then slice them across. And now I have a group of three edges like this. Then I need to look for the last two red and yellow edges. So here is one like that. And here is another one like that. So move it across and now I've solved my fourth edge. So I'm just going to store it in this layer. So one, two, three, four, continue using my free slice and solve the last four edges. So to solve the next four edges on here using free slice, I do the same thing. However, because I've solved four down here, I don't need to rotate and look at those, look at the edges on the bottom face. So I can just look around to see what to solve next. And I suppose I see these orange and white pieces, which are already, uh, which are already connected. So I can use this orange and white one, attach it there. And then this orange and white one, I can insert like that and slice it over there. And the final orange and white one is here and it needs to go down here. So I'll flip it, slice it across, and then put that out into the top layer. Now looking next, I see these orange and yellows. So these two, and I see this orange and yellow piece here. So what I can do is move it over to here, insert it and solve it like that. Now I don't see any other orange and yellow pieces on the top 
And in fact, the last two orange and yellow pieces are down here and they belong in this position and this position. However, at the moment they're in this position and this position. So I'll need to flip this edge in place. And now that when I, now when I slice this one across and this one, the, uh, the orange and yellow edge becomes solved. So I'm going to store this orange and yellow edge into the top layer. And the next thing I see is actually these green and yellows. And I notice that these two green and yellow pieces, these two wings, the inner wings are solved um, like correctly relative to one another. But these two compared to them are not solved. So what I'm going to do is just slice these two outer wings out of the way, then flip this edge and then slice them back like that. And now all I need to do is find the last middle edge, which is actually back here. So moving those across, I can pair up those edges and then put them into the top layer. And finally, I saw back here that there were two white and blue edges paired up. Another white and blue one is here. So I can slice across like that. Um, another white and blue one is here. I can just slice across like that. And the final white and blue piece is here. So I can insert it, join it up, and then put it into my top face and then restore my centers around this axis. So now I've solved the first eight edges. So four on here and four on here. And now I need to solve my last four edges around this slice. To solve the last four edges, we're going to do it in two steps. So firstly, we're going to solve the inner three edges like we would on a five by five. So ignoring the outer wings, we just solve these two inner wings and this middle, this middle edge on all four of our last edges. And then after that, we pretend that this middle edge is just one piece because it's already solved and solve it with respect to these two outer wings. Again, like we would on a five by five. So it's, it's basically just like doing five by five last two edges two times. So we want to ignore these outer wings and just focus on the inner wings and the middle edges. So I see this middle edge and this wing paired up together and the other green and red one is right here. So what I can do is slice like that. So do a wide slice move, flip this one in place and then slice back. And now I've solved these green and reds. So now I need to look over here and I see this yellow and orange middle edge and this yellow and uh, sorry this yellow and blue middle edge and this yellow and blue wing and this one belongs up here and its partner is over here and so if i slice it then i can flip it and slice it back to create these three now next up uh, i see these blue and oranges and these blue and oranges here so again i have the same thing where i can just slice flip it in place and then slice back. So now I've solved these blue and oranges, the uh, yeah, blue and orange, blue and yellow, and green and red. And for my last edge, so for my last inner edge pairing, I actually have uh, edge parity. So we use the same algorithm that we do on the five by five edge parity, the same one that we do on the six by six edge parity, and we effectively apply it like this. So there's a slight modification to the algorithm. So for this inner edge parity, I'm going to use the edge parity algorithm, which goes like this. So. like that, and now that's solved our blue and red inner edges. So now that we've solved these inner wings and this middle wing, all we need to do is essentially pretend that this, these groups of three pieces are just one edge and it basically again becomes like a five by five last four edge stage. So we've got this piece and the two wings around it. So I guess we can, uh, we can yeah, go ahead and start solving pieces. So I see this blue and yellow one I can slice it over to here, flip it in place, and then slice back to create this one by four block. And the other blue and yellow one is here. So I can slice across, flip this one in place to go up here, such that when I slice back, it creates this blue and yellow. Um, next up, I see these blue and oranges. So this blue and orange and this one, I can slice it, flip it in place, and then slice back. And then to attach this final blue and orange one to this position, I can slice, flip it in place and slice back like so. And then for our last two edges, um, I have 
this case where I have a block and a flipped block. So all I need to do is align it like this, slice it, flip this in place, and then slice back. As you may have guessed, it is also possible to have edge parity when pairing up these groups of three edges with the outer wings. So if we're using the approach that I've shown you here, which is to solve the three inner wings first, and then solve the two outer wings, there may be, the, there is the possibility that you'll need to execute an edge pairing, an edge parity algorithm twice. And the algorithm for this edge parity case is slightly different to the one before. So it just goes like this. So after we've tackled the edge pairing, we're on to the 3x3 stage, and you'll be pleased to note that there is no OLL and PLL parity on the 7x7. So we can just go ahead and do our 3x3 stage as normal. So this pair, this pair, this pair, and then this pair, OLL. and then PLL. And then we're done. 